the problem we're going to look at here is steady state conduction through a cylinder and uh, it's a standard problem out of the text by Incropure. So what I'm going to do is instead of reading through the entire problem statement, I've created a diagram that shows the problem. We have what they're referring to in the problem statement as a thin-walled pipe. So what we're saying when we mention a thin-walled pipe is that we're going to not really be concerned about any of the heat transfer through the wall of the pipe. Indeed, what we're told here is that we have a specified surface temperature of the outer layer of the pipe, and we're supposed to assume that the temperature on the inside layer of the pipe is essentially the same temperature. So in this particular case, we have an outside pipe wall temperature of minus 15 degrees C. The problem statement then goes on to say that there is a layer of ice, that there's water flowing through the pipe, and a layer of ice of unknown thickness, T, has developed on the inside of the pipe. So that defines the cylindrical geometry. So we have a defined pipe radius. They give it to us as 15 millimeters, but over here on the right, we know that we need to convert this to standard SI units. So we're going to write 50 millimeters as 0.05 meters. And the radius of the inner layer of the ice is unknown. So RP minus RI would give us the thickness of the ice layer. We're also told that we have water flowing inside the pipe, liquid water, that's at a T infinity temperature of three degrees Celsius, and we have a convective heat transfer coefficient of 2,000 watts per meter squared per Kelvin. Uh, the problem statement says it explicitly, but we should also note that if we have an ice water interface, that would be the temperature of the inner surface, and that is going to be zero degrees C. So even if it wasn't stated in the problem statement, it would be something that we would be able to find out. Now the idea of what it is that we're trying to do, and in most of these problems in a steady state situation, is we know that temperature, or heat rather, is going to flow downhill. So we have the high temperature in here, and the cold temperature out here, and we are going to get heat flowing out of the pipe into the outside ambient air. The notation that we're going to use here is radial heat transfer, and we're going to put the prime here to denote that we're going to do this in terms of unit length. So the units of this will be watts per meter, but it means watts per unit length. Now, to go ahead and solve these types of problems, it's usually suggested that we take a look and create a thermal circuit, where the temperature difference, in this case, we have an inner temperature, or, or rather, I'll start over here at the outside temperature, T surface outer is known. We have a middle temperature, in this case T surface inner, also known, and in this particular problem we also know our T infinity temperature, so all three temperatures, all three driving temperatures are known. We then have two resistances, the first one being a conductive resistance, which is the conduction through the layer of ice. Um, the ice itself has a thermal conductivity, we'll call it K sub I, of 1.88 watts per meter per Kelvin. So if we take a look at this resistor over here, the expression for the thermal resistance for conduction is the natural log of the ratio of the two radiuses that define the layer, in this case R pipe divided by R ice, and all of this will be over 2 pi of the thermal conductivity of the ice itself. The, con the inside, so this takes care of heat transfer through the solid layer, but now we need to get the heat from the solid layer 
into the liquid water more since we're going the other way vice versa so we're going from the liquid water that's at the higher temperature out to the ice and then out to the ambient air so the the resistive term for convection is just one over two pi times the radius of the location where convection is taking place, in this case the radius of the ice layer, and times the convective heat transfer coefficients. Now the last thing we need to add on to our diagram is an actual indication of which way the heat is moving. So as we said we have a high temperature here in the interior, so we'll denote this red arrow to show which way the heat's going. And in this case, again, it's Q radial prime watts per meter. And what we note is that this red arrow, the heat is going continually through both our resistors. Right? So there's the same rate of heat passing through the entire circuit. So we have a, a thermal circuit where the resistances are in series. That being the case, we can now write two equations and solve for our two unknowns. Our two unknowns here are the rate at which heat is being conducted out of the pipe and the radius of the ice layer itself. So to solve for two unknowns, we need two equations. And the first equation would be Q R prime will equal now a temperature difference. So we'll go from T surface inner, which we know to be zero degrees, minus T surface outer, which is at minus 15 degrees, and we'll divide that by the thermal resistance. So ln of Rp over Ri divided by 2 pi K ice. And the second equation that we're, we'll end up with is again the same rate of energy transfer has to go through the convective resistor, which in this case the driving temperature is so T infinity minus T surface inner divided by 1 over 2 pi ri times h. Now you can go ahead and solve this um, whichever way you want really, but you do note that you have two expressions on the right hand side that are equal to each other and solve for ri. And once we have ri we can go ahead and put in the information and solve for the total rate at which heat is traveling through the object.